Especially for the believer. There is hardly a day that goes by without us hearing our most sacred and cherished beliefs. The culmination of the teaching and the passing down of knowledge from the creator of the human race to the members of the human race. The knowledge that without, without it there would be no happiness in our lives, nor fulfillment, nor purpose nor satisfaction. This gift from the Creator to the creation is being attacked, and that's putting it mildly. And these sort of attacks can take an emotional toll on us. It even took an emotional toll on the Prophets and Messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're angry, you listen to angry music, it makes you more angry. You're sad, you listen to sad music, it makes you more sad. You're broke, you're frustrated, you go drive too fast, you get a fine. Now you're more broke. Have I relieved my stress or is it still with me but I'm covering it up? I'm smiling at the boys, but inside I'm crying. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent blessed words to console him and support him and strengthen him at those times. So don't be surprised if you find yourself affected by this onslaught. Don't be surprised. It means that your heart is working. But every once in a while, as a Muslim, you might feel like you need a break. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa has told us how to get that break, how to get that peace. And it's easier than you might think. First of all, think about the kind of things you normally do when you're stressed. And it's different for everyone, right? You might invite the boys around, have a barbecue. You might listen to some music by yourself. You might hang out with a group of people who are fun. Let's go out, man. Let's get crazy. But the point is that even if you do these things, whatever they may be, however you think that you are relieving your stress. While you are doing that activity, whatever it is, the thing that's stressing you out, the thing that's bothering you, the thing that's preoccupying you is still really on your mind, isn't it? While you're out with the friends or while you're smoking the shisha or while you got the music cranked up or while you're driving too fast or whatever it is. Have you really forgotten about that thing that's bothering you? You can't find a job. You can't find a wife. You can't get a visa. You can't get a qualification. Whatever it may be. All of these things that we think are the things that are going to make us feel better or relieve our stress, just make us forget. I put it to you that you already know that none of these things actually work. You're angry, you listen to angry music, it makes you more angry. You're sad, you listen to sad music, it makes you more sad. You're broke, you're frustrated, you go drive too fast, you get a fine. Now you're more broke. Have I relieved my stress or is it still with me but I'm covering it up? I'm smiling at the boys, but inside I'm crying. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, everything that he said was gold. And there are several hadith that are all similar to this one that I'm about to mention. Some are longer, some are shorter. Let's go with the simplest version. Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, he said that there are angels roving the earth, flying around, and they are looking for the gatherings in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being remembered and mentioned. And one will come, and two will come, and five will come. And subhanAllah, they will start to run out of space. They will start to surround the believers with their wings. 
And then they will have to stand on each other's shoulders. And then their number will fill the first heaven. So already we have run out of numbers and words to describe the distance that these angels are going to fill up in the first heaven. Already we can't describe. How many angels are gathering around to listen to sinners like you and me mention and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And they will reach to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala distances and numbers that are un unfathomable. And then something incredible will happen. There are certain benefits that are tangible, that are seen. First of all, you might learn something new. Second of all, you might be reminded about something that you already know. But it's good to be reminded. Third, the angels are making dua for you for as long as you are there. And if nothing else, if nothing else, at least you are not in, in a haram environment. These are all tangible benefits. But it's the intangible benefits that are incredible and in which you will find the rest that you actually seek, that you can't get from music and shisha and driving too fast and partying too long and being up all night and girls and guys. There is no comfort there for you. In these gatherings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will then send something down from Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will pour, will pour down onto those believers who are in that gathering. His forgiveness, His mercy, and His sakina. Sakina is a difficult word to translate into English with one word. It has so many meanings. Peace, rest security, tranquility. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give the hearts rest that are in a place where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being mentioned and remembered. Did Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ever lie? He never lied and we believe everything he said, the things we see and the things we can't see. And he said that in those gatherings Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send down upon the people sitting there his sakina. This rest of the heart that you and I are looking for, that's where it is. Earlier today, you might have had something on your mind. You might have had something bothering you. You might have had a concern or a worry, a fear and anxiety an apprehension, a preoccupation. Are you thinking about it now? This is where you can find those moments of peace, those moments of tranquility. When you feel like you need a break from the world, it's in the gatherings of knowledge that you will have your sakina gifted from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the battery is flashing battery low, this is where you can come and pump yourself up again. This is where you can come and know that you are on the truth, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent 124,000 prophets and messengers to give you this one message of how to win the favor and the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how to be happy in this life and how to be a member of Jannah in the next life. And so it's in these gatherings that the hearts will find rest. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, truly in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do hearts find rest. So when you feel like the world is getting too much, now you know where you can go and now you know what you can do. There are millionaires and billionaires in this world that are miserable. Wallahi, when you are in these gatherings and when you receive the gift of Sakina from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are more rich than the billionaire. You are like the man or woman who has everything because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you the peace and tranquility and has poured His mercy and forgiveness down on top of you. No matter how much money you have, how many cars you have, how many houses you have, how many wives you have, how many children you have, you can have all of those things and still be miserable. But you will never have the sakina from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be miserable. So in that moment, you become more rich than the billionaire. You become the person who is free in a world that's full of prisoners. This world is like a prison for the believers. Wallahi, it's such an interesting hadith. And there are several meanings that people have done their best effort to understand. 
One particular meaning that maybe is the most common one that you'll read is that they say because the believer is restricted. So because of these restrictions on the believer, he is like a prisoner. But there is another explanation. For the person who more than anything else, they desire the company of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they think about their wish list, things they can't wait to have, they're not thinking money and cards. When they have a list inside their mind or inside their heart about the things they want, number one on the list is they want to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number two on the list is that they want to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number three on the list is that they want to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for this person living in this dunya is a prison for them. They are kept at a distance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his last words that he uttered before he died was he said, Bala Rafiq al-A'la, the highest companion, the highest companion, the highest companion, because he wanted to go and be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That wasn't just the first or second or third thing on the list, that was the whole list. So in that is a couple of takeaways for you and me. If you and I have other things on our list, that means that we have work to do on ourselves. If our wish list, if your wish list is all dunya, then ya akhi, where are your priorities? We know this life is temporary and we can't take any of these things with us. But these are the things that we allow to occupy every waking and even sleeping moment of our life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the list. And that's why this world is a prison for the believer because he is kept at a distance from the one that he loves. The believer who thinks like the Prophet and the companions, he goes to sleep at night dreaming of the day that he will be able to look up at the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be smiling at him. They're greeting on the day they see him. On the day they see him, their greeting will be salam. فَادْخُلِي فِي عِبَادِي وَادْخُلِي جَنَّتِي O oh, you, the soul who is now at peace, enter into my Jannah. This is the day that the believers dream about. This is why this world is a prison. What happiness do you have here? Tell me. The day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come to them in Jannah. And he will say to them, they are in Jannah already, they've made it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to them, oh my servants, are you pleased? Are you happy? Is there something I can do for you? Is there something I can get for you? And the believers, they will be shocked. How can we not be happy? We're, we're, we're in Jannah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, shall I tell you something that's better than what you have? And again, shocked, they will say, Ya Allah, what can be better than this? We were in Jannah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, I will be pleased with you. And I will never again, never again, never again be displeased with you. La khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahzanun. La khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahzanun. La khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahzanun. They will never again feel fear. And they will never again feel sadness. And the crazy thing is that you and I know all of this. Wallahi, if you pay attention, I will never be speaking and give you new information because I actually don't know anything. Everything I'm saying to you in all the khutbahs and talks that I've given is stuff you already know. Wallahi. Don't you already know this? You know and I know. But what are we chasing? What are we preoccupied with? 